and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio once again. In this segment, we're going to have a brief conversation with Sarah Keenig. She's joining us here as Assistant Professor of Physiology and Cell Biology at the Ohio State University College of Medicine. She's joining us this evening to discuss the discovery of rare genetic mutations that affect good cholesterol. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Sarah. Thank you very much for having me. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, well, I, I'm born and bred in Ohio. Um, I, I did my undergrad at Ohio Wesleyan University. Um, afterwards, I spent a couple years as a research assistant at Nationwide Children's Hospital before going back to graduate school at Ohio State University. Um, I did my, my PhD in biomedical sciences. I recently got a Master's of Operational Excellence from the uh, Fisher School of Business at OSU, um, and and I've my, you know my 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 interests are in cardiovascular genetics, uh, specifically focusing on atherosclerosis and cholesterol um, and the vascular wall. Well, it's my understanding that uh, through a unique clinician scientist collaboration program, Ohio State researchers used genetic testing, I do believe, to, to solve the medical mystery of this uh, active guy who suffered a heart attack in his 20s and continued to have heart related problems thereafter. Uh, it's my understanding that they discovered a rare genetic mutation that had never been identified before. Uh, talk about this patient and this discovery, if you would. Absolutely. So, so we're so fortunate to have um, met the patient and his family through this um, close collaboration that that we researchers have with um, the physicians, cardiologists at Ohio State. And so, um, this particular patient was brought to our attention because, as you mentioned, of the extraordinary circumstances around his his illness. So, he had um, a heart attack while he was training for a marathon. Um, and this was actually immediately after a, a 10 mile run, which, you know, is, is definitely, um, it puts a lot of, of strain on the body, but when you're in your twenties and you're, you're training for a marathon, the last thing you expect to happen is, is to have a heart attack. And, and, you know, despite medical management and, and surgical interventions over the, 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 you know, eight years that followed his heart attack, um, physicians really weren't able to, to keep his, um, arteries from continuing to clog. And so at that point, his cardiologist um, brought his case to this um, collaborative research group. And, and I took an interest because of my interest in, in cholesterol and atherosclerosis. And um, we performed whole genome sequencing on him and his, his brother and his mother, who um, in the time that had passed since his initial um, heart attack, they had both developed severe coronary artery disease as well. And, and through whole genome sequencing, we were able to identify uh, there were actually two variants in the gene um, SCARB1 that encodes one of the HDL receptors. One of those mutations had never before been identified, um, and it actually resulted in a, um, an anal allele. So, so that copy of the gene is completely, not, it's completely absent. Um, and then the other mutation had previously been identified before, but because of this very unique presentation alongside the null allele, um, you know, this, these individuals did not have a, a normally functioning protein. And that's the mutation that, that predisposes someone to high cholesterol? Yes. So, so there, are, there are, you know, a series of, um, a panel of genes that, that can predispose someone to high cholesterol. The interesting thing about the, the gene that, that we identified and the, and the variants that we identified is that this gene actually um, is important in reverse cholesterol transport and in the processing of HDL, which many people know is your good cholesterol. Mm -hmm. um, and so in, in this particular case, you know, the, the cholesterol wasn't extraordinarily high. Um, it's not like in familial hypercholesterolemia where we see um, cholesterol levels in the 400. Um, our proband had, you know, cholesterol levels in, in the 200s. Um, and his HDL looked decent, you know, it was around 70, and, and that would be considered really good. Um, but unfortunately, what we think happened is because of these variants, uh, his good cholesterol wasn't functioning properly. And so basically, it we think it wasn't it wasn't functioning at all, um, or or minimally, and and that is why, despite those numbers, he had severe coronary artery disease. What kind of new uh, therapies do you think are being potentially developed based on this new uh, discovery? As as far as 
cholesterol goes. Uh, statins are routinely used, and, and I think they will you know, continue to be routinely used. They're, they're great for atherosclerosis and, and dyslipidemia. There are also a couple of, um, you know, there's this new class, um, PCFK9 inhibitors, which also, um, you know, both of these drug classes are targeting your, your bad cholesterol, so your LDL-associated cholesterol. Um, and I think that this research, this study that we've published, is really the first to show a causative effect of mutations in um, the HDL pathway contributing to coronary artery disease. And so... Although these mutations had previously been associated with coronary artery disease and atherosclerosis um, on a population-wide level, we were really able to show that these mutations were inherited with disease. Um, and that is very powerful data, which allows us to then focus on this, this reverse cholesterol transport pathway and the, the good cholesterol pathway to try and, and identify additional therapies that can be used along with um, statins or even the PCSK9 inhibitors. What is the JB project and how is this particular project important as far as this discovery is concerned? Yeah, so the JB project is, is really the reason that this discovery happened. Uh, it's a very unique collaborative uh, group at Ohio State University with um, physicians and, and physician scientists and then basic scientists. Um, and, and what it is, is it is a, a, a group that is funded by, um, you know, it's, it's philanthropy dollars, um, and, it, and it is internal funding so that we can take cases that we don't have a clinical explanation for um, and, and discuss them and see if there's any value in possibly um, doing genome sequencing or, or even, you know, bringing them back um, and, and doing additional research studies. Um, to try and identify those causes of disease. Um, and so it is, it is very truly collaborative, and it, it starts at the um, bedside, it comes back to the bench, um, and then hope will bring it back to the, to the bedside. And, you know, in this specific case, we, um, we think we understand what is going on to um, cause the severe coronary disease that the family is seeing. Um, and, and that additional information now, um, although it is, you know, a research study, um, provides their clinicians with um, additional information when they're treating the patient. Is there anything that you'd like to add for our listeners before I ask for a website where our listeners can learn more? Absolutely. So the, the press release um, about this research study can be found at wexnermedical.osu.edu. Sarah, it's been a pleasure speaking with you this evening. Thank you so much for lending us some of your time. Oh, thank you for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Sarah Keenig. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com health professional radio.